welcome back. The last class we have discussed about uh, the ripple carry adder and uh, carry save adders. Okay. So, this carry bypass and carry skip adder, uh, the, I am pretty sure that carry skip adder you have learnt in last semester. So, this both of this adders may include a redundant logic. That means, uh, since the carry is uh, uh, can be generated in uh, the uh, two different ways. So, we just take uh, the uh, first signal to arrive. So, we must be very, very careful uh, so that uh, the redundant logic is not optimized away during logic synthesis. Okay? So, let us move on to the concept of uh, the look ahead uh, carry adder. Okay? So, the look ahead carry adder, I think this uh, derivation you might have learnt in your lower semesters. Okay? So, what is uh, C1? C1 is nothing but uh, G1 plus P1 into C0. Okay? So, this C0 is nothing but I am assuming I is equal to 1. Okay? If you assume I is equal to a 0, then I get this as C, it is C of minus 1. Okay? So, C1 is equal to G1 plus P1 into a C0. Okay? Then C1 plus P1 into, you have to substitute the C0 value over here. So, what is C0? That is the G0 plus P1 into C minus 1. Okay? So, since there is no previous carry, okay, so we can uh, neglect that. So, we can write C1 is equal to G1 plus P1 into G0. So, now what about C2? C2 is nothing but uh, G2 plus P2 into G1 plus P2, P1, G0. So, how I get? See, actually the C2 is nothing but G2 plus P2 into C1 by, but what is my C1 here? G2 plus P2, you substitute the value of C1 here now. So, that is G1 plus P1 into G0. So, what I get here is? G2 plus P2 G1 plus P2 P1 G0. Okay, the same thing I got. Similarly, for C3, it is G3 plus P2 into C2. Okay, so substitute the value of this C2, you will get G3 plus P2 into G2 plus P2 P1 G1 plus P3 P2. P1 G0. Okay? So, first stage we are uh, feeding the inputs as G0 P0 G1 P1. This is the first stage. So, the output of the first stage that is look ahead generator, the first stage will be C1 is equal to G1 plus P1 G0. That is what this. Okay? And what we got here as another output as P0 P1 because P0 P1 is the another output. So, with that G2 and P2, all four are serving as the input to the stage 2 or L2. So, we get here as C2 is equal to G2 plus P2 G1 plus P2 P1 G0 okay? and another output as P0 P1 P2. Along with that, we get G3 and P3 and finally, we get at the stage 3 as, okay? so we get C3 is equal to G, uh, G3 plus P3 G2 plus P3 P2 G1 plus P3 P2 P1 G0 and another output as P0 P1 P2 P3. Okay? So, this is a 4 bit uh, look ahead carry adder. So, and same thing you can continue. So, on like 5 bit, 6 bit, 7 bit. Okay? So, what is this uh, Brunt Kung look ahead carry adder? We will see that. Before that, what is this CLG one block contains? So, what is the logic behind over here? Now, I have given here as G0, P0, G1, P1. So, that means I am assuming I is equal to 0. Assume I is equal to 0. Now, this becomes G0, this becomes P0, okay? and this becomes the G1 and this becomes P1. If you substitute as the i is equal to 0. Substitute i is equal to 0 now. Okay? So, now there is an AND gate here. Okay? So, AND gate is nothing but the G0 okay? and 
here it is the P1, you get here the output of the AND gate will be G0 into P1 as per this uh, diagram, okay. And this is a P0, okay, and uh, this is P1. So, you the output of the AND gate will be P0, P1, okay. So, I will call this as first AND gate, I will call this as second AND gate. So, the output of first AND gate is G0 P1 and second AND gate is P0 P1 and you can see here the G1 is coming over here. So, your output of the OR gate will be G1 plus P1 into G0, okay. So, that is what it is written here C1 is equal to G1 plus P1 G0 and another output is P0 P1. So, I am getting here as the P0 and P1, okay. So, the figure B is cell to generate the look ahead terms, figure B shows that cell to generate the look ahead terms. Now, see the figure C, the figure C is nothing but you can see the figure C, you can see the figure C, this is with respect to figure A, you observe the arrangement of cells, we have done it into a form of a tree structure. Arrangement of cells, we have done it into a form of a, a tree structure, okay. So, why? It gives a less delay. In order to achieve a less delay, we have arranged in this structure and this we are calling it as a Bruntkung carry look ahead adder, okay. The Bruntkung that is the name of the scientist, okay. So, Bruntkung look ahead carry adder. So, what is the advantage here? See here, to get the output here, to get the output here, how many delays you should pass here, no? First delay, one delay, here one more delay, here one more delay. So, finally, after three delays, I am going to get the output as C3. If I want to get a C3, if I want to get a C3, three delays are required with respect to figure A. Now, to get a C3 here, I required only two delays, right. So, this is L1 and L2 will be in parallel. So, it takes only one delay. Both will take one delay and you should pass over here. So, the one more delay, so it is one more delay, so one more delay, so this both requires one delay and this is one more delay, finally with two delays I am going to get C3, okay and how to achieve C2 also, so how we can take a C2? Okay. So, you can see here the C1, whatever we got here C1 and the output called P0 P1 and here G2 P2 we are taking from here, we are getting C2. So, to get C2 also we require 2 delay only. So, this one delay, this one delay. So, finally we get a 2 delays. Are you getting it? So, the figure D and E is the simplified version of A and C. You can see here, this is figure D and figure A you compare, just a simplified version. So, it black box view indicates it requires 3 delays. You should pass to get 3, 3 delays are required, okay. And if you see the figure C and if you see the simplified version in figure E, so these two are in parallel now. So, it takes only one delay plus this one delay you get it requires only a uh, two delays, okay. And look at the figure F. So, the figure F is nothing but the, it is an uh, look ahead logic for an 8 bit adder. Suppose if you consider an 8 bit adder, suppose if you consider an 8 bit adder here, see here, this is a 4 bit, the same structure, tree structure. And this is one more tree structures are there, 4, 5, 6, 7 forms one tree structure and this is 0, 1, 2, 3, it looks like same here, 
right okay so now three delays are required over here to get the seventh one three delays are required again to get the c3 three delays are required to get the c7 we require a three delays because this will run in parallel this is one delay okay and next this will be one more delay okay and this will be one more delay so finally to get a c7 we require only three delays because it is constructed in a parallel form are you getting it so i will discuss figure g in depth okay so you can see here this is the figure g it is a an 8 bit a brent kung carry look ahead order the first block this is my first block this is my second block this is my third block okay the first block it creates a generate and propagate signals that is ai into bi and ai xor bi it will create and generate the signals so i got now so with the help of this gi and pi okay and with the help of the uh, this brent kung adder there's a 8 bit adder we can create the carry signal so carry signal is generated here so the output of the look ahead logic are the carry signals together with these inputs forms the sum output the output of the look ahead carry logic okay that is the output of the look ahead carry logic gives the carry bits together with the input bits that is a and bi we can we can form the we get the sum bits we get the sum okay so the advantage of uh, this type of adder is that the delay from input to output is more nearly equal than in other adders the advantage of this adder is that the delay from inputs to outputs is more nearly equal than in other adders other adders so it reduces the unnecessary unwanted switching events it reduces the unnecessary and unwanted switching events and also reduces the power dissipation and also reduces the power dissipation so you can ask a question okay i have learned the carry look ahead adder so the delay for an 8 bit adder it takes only three delays okay so how we will come to know this brent kung look ahead adder is much better than a ripple carry adder okay so i have written a, a note over here okay so how many the four delays are created are needed for the carry signal how four delays so this requires this requires one delay first block requires one delay right and the second block that is nothing but your the second block is nothing but your adder block that is 8 bit uh, look ahead carry adder this is a 8 bit brent kung carry look ahead adder block this requires a three delays okay so to get a carry how many delays are required four delays to get a carry we require four delays right similarly to get a sum we require only one delay why because this is already computed right four see already the input bits are there that is i am taking here as the a x or uh, the a x or b as your pi okay so a x or b and whatever we are getting here as the ci x or if you do it so you get the sum so one delay is required so total how much 3 plus 1 plus 1 so we get a uh, five delays five delays are required to implement a brent kung carry look ahead adder for an i am assumed here as an 8 bit adder similarly if you assume for an 8 bit ripple carry adder we require seven delays we require seven delays that means ripple carry adder exhibits a linearly proportional relationship 
it is linearly proportional. S same thing if you consider instead of an 8 bit adder, you go for 16 bit adder. So, 16 bit adder means the first block it requires a one delay only. Second block we are designing a 16 bit brunt kung adder, carry look add adder. That means that requires four delays. And again in the last block it consumes one delay. So, how many delay? We require to implement a 16 bit a brunt kung carry look add adder, we require only six delays. Whereas, in case of a ripple carry adder, we require 15 delays. Are you getting it? That is why this brunt kung carry look add adder is faster compared to the ripple carry adder. I hope uh, you understood this. Okay. So, next we will discuss about the uh, carry select adder. So, once you know the concept of carry select adder, then later we can discuss about this the conditional sum adder. Okay. So, first this is the figure A, it shows a carry select adder. This figure A shows a carry select adder. this is an XOR symbol it is. Okay. So, now suppose you have an n bit adder that generates two sums, one sum with a condition that the carry n is equal to 0, another sum assumes that the condition that the carry in is equal to 1. The reason n bit adder it generates two sums, one sum assumes that the condition that the carry in is equal to 0, another sum assumes that the condition that the carry in is equal to 1. Okay. Now, we can split the n bit adder into i bit adder for the i LSPs and n minus i bit adder for the n minus i MSBs. Suppose if you assume a 16 bit adder, okay? if you assume i is equal to 8, if you assume the if you assume the i is equal to 8, if you assume i is equal to 8. Okay? Then this will be LSB and what for your MSB? MSB will be n minus i, right? So, n is 16. So, this is also it will be 8. That means, we split exactly into two halves, right? So, your n minus i is also equal to 8 and i is also equal to 8 and it generates two outputs that is two sums one with the carry in is equal to 0 another with the carry in is equal to 1 carry in is equal to 1 okay and this carry select adder it produces two conditional sums this is what the conditional sums along with that the two true and complementary carry signals. You can observe here the true and complementary carry signals. You can see here carry out when carry in is equal to 0, okay, that is AI into BI. Similarly, carry out if carry in is equal to 1, that is AI plus a BI. Are you getting it? Okay. So, this is known as carry select adder. Okay. Now, what is conditional sum adder? So, the two that is true and complementary that is uh, this signal and this signal. Okay. The two that is 
true and complementary the carry signals from the LSB adders that is from uh, the least significant uh, bit adders okay, that is used to select the it is used to select between the two that is I will write it here the two n minus i plus 1 bit conditional sums from the from the MSB adders. See here look at this diagram carefully this two signals are coming from the LSB adders. Okay. What are these two signals? These two are the true and complementary carry signals. These two and complementary carry signals are used to select between the n minus i plus 1 bit conditional sums from the MSB adders to select these two, to select these two. Okay. In order to select these two, we need 2 into n minus i plus 1 2 input muxes. That means here we require a here we require a, a 2 input mux, 2 input mux or 2 is to 1 mux. I will call here as the uh, 2 is to 1 mux. So, or 2 input mux or 2 is to 1 mux. Here also I require the 2 is to 1 mux because this is a diagram shows it is a 2 bit conditional sum adder. Diagram shows that it is a 2 bit conditional sum adder. Okay. So, once again I will tell about this uh, the uh, carry uh, select adder. What do you mean by carry select adder actually? Suppose you have a n bit adder, it generates the 2 sums that is 1 sum assumes uh, with the condition that carry in is equal to 0 another sum assumes that with the carry in is equal to uh, 1. Okay. So, this n bit adder is divided into the i bit adder from the i LSBs for the i LSBs and n minus the i bit adder for the n minus i MSBs. So, if you consider a 16 as n value, if you assume i is equal to 8 as an LSB adder and n minus i will be the uh, MSB. So, that is also equal to 8 that means we are dividing exactly into the uh, two halls. So, both of this uh, smaller adders is going to generate the uh, true and uh, the two conditional sums and true and complementary carry signals. Okay. So, that is nothing but your carry select adder, but this two and complementary uh, carry signals the two two and uh, with the two true and complementary carry signals from the LSB adder are used to select the uh, the two that is the n minus i plus one bit conditional sums okay from the MSB adder. So this LSB uh, the carry signals are used to select the two conditional sums from the MSB adders. So, we require to select those two outputs, we require again multiplexers. How many multiplexers are required? We require 2 into n minus i plus 1 multiplexers. Okay. So, this figure, uh, uh, what is that? This figure C is nothing but the figure B is nothing but the multiplexers. So, this is what you can see here. The heavy line it, it is indicates it is a, a bus symbol. So, suppose if your carry signal is a 0, then uh, this will be appear at the output. Suppose if your carry signal is 1, okay, input carry signal is 1, then this will appear at the output. Okay. So, it is the control line and this is the logic symbol how it uh, uh, looks okay. and this is a 2 bit uh, conditional sum. Adder. So, let me explain with some example. So, you will get a, a more clarity. So, here I have taken A is equal to 1 1. 
that means a not as 1 okay and a 1 also as 1. Similarly, initial carry I have assumed it as 0 and the b not as 0 and b 1 as 1. So, you just do the normal addition how we have done in the ripple carry order. Now, if you see here there is no carry okay then 1 plus 0 if you add it what you are going to get sum will be 1 carry will be 0. You can see here sum will be 1 carry will be 0. Suppose assume if there is a previous carry. So, what you are going to get assume if there is a carry then sum will be 0 and carry will be 1 are you getting it. So, this is the first block ok. Now, we will come to a 1 and b 1 ok. Then we are giving a value as 1 1. Now, 1 1 if there is no carry you assume if there is no carry then what happens here 1 plus 1 will be sum will be 0 carry will be 1. Suppose if there is a previous carry then what happens carry is also 1 sum is also 1 ok. Now, this is the carry select adder over now is conditional sum adder. So, these two are the true and complementary carry signals from your LSB adder which are those which are those you can see here this signal this signal is coming here ok. Similarly, this signal is coming here these are the true and complementary carry signals from the LSB adder ok. So, that two uh, carry signals will act like a control line or the select line to the 2 is to 1 multiplexers. Now, suppose if you are the uh, what is that the, the initial carry is 0 over here you can see here if your initial carry is 0. So, these two values what are those values the 0 1 your sum is 0 this value and carry is 1 that is appearing over here your sum is 0 and carry is 1 that is appearing over here and what about your the s naught that is this s naught underscore 0 that is 1 this is appear over here ok. So, I will choose next suppose if your carry in input signal is 1 if your carry in input signal is 1 then which has to be selected here. So, C 2 is 1 that has come over here and the S 1 underscore 0 underscore 1 this value it has come over here. So, this is the signal it is coming from the S naught underscore 0 underscore 1 having the carry input signal as 1. So, that 0 is coming over here. So, finally, what is the initial carry I have given? I have given here as C naught. If I given here as C 1 then this could have appeared over here. If I given here as C naught, so what is the value here? Your sum S naught will be 1 that is appeared over here and your C 2 will be 1 that is appeared over here and your S 1 will be 0 that is appeared over here. So, finally, if you add it finally, if you add it so there is no carry. So, 1 plus 0 will be 1 1 plus 1 will be 0 with a carry 1. So, this is only C 2 this is the carry 1 and this is sum S of 1 that is 0 and this is also sum S of 0 that is 1. I hope you understood this carry select adder and the conditional sum adder. So, this is a 7 bit conditional sum adder I just took uh, from IEEE transaction paper ok. So, you can analyze it. So, next we move on to the concept of uh, the multiple booth encoding ok. So, that is a multi sorry multiplier booth encoding 
okay. So, let me give an introduction about uh, the multiplier uh, using a booth encoding technique, okay. So, use it for uh, the multiplication of signed binary numbers and then product is represented in 2's complement notation. So, the product will be in 2's complement, you have to take uh, uh, the again 1's complement and again plus 1 if you add it, you get the uh, <coughs> correct answer. Then handles both, the handles both the uh, both positive and uh, uh, negative multipliers that means it can take uh, that is what minus 7 minus 2 or minus 7 plus 2 or minus 2 plus 7 or minus minus any number it will take. Then number of addition operation is going to reduce if you are using a consecutive 1s and zeros in the multiplier. Consecutive 1s that means uh, 2 1s if it is coming then no need to do any addition or subtraction operation just we are uh, shifting the uh, data okay. So, or 0 0 if it comes also we are just shifting the data. So, worst case is when there are pairs of alternate zeros and 1s. So, if it comes here as 0 1 we do subtraction 1 0 then we do uh, addition okay. Then we are going to do the uh, shift right operation okay. So, what happens? the number of uh, additions and subtraction is also uh, increases. So, this is the algorithm. So, start what is A? A is nothing but uh, the accumulator. So, accumulator initially I have taken it as 0 ok. So, if I assume a 4 bit number then 4 zeros I will be uh, storing it. Then Q my q minus 1 that is also a single bit it is 0, m I have taken it as multiplicand and q I have taken it as multiplier and there is a count I am taken it as n ok. Now, I am going to compare here the q naught and q minus 1, this is the q naught and q minus 1 I will compare ok. So, if it is 1 0 then I am going to do the subtraction operation. If it is 0 1 then I am going to do the addition operation. Now, if I get 1 1 or 0 0 I am not going to do any addition or subtraction I am directly I am going to do the uh, the arithmetic shift operation that is I am shifting the uh, data into the uh, the shift right operation that is I am shifting the data into the uh, rightmost side ok. Then count minus 1. Okay. So, count is equal to count minus 1. So, I am decrementing the count. So, if it is 0 then my process is completed and if it is not then go back and do the operation again. Okay. So, I have taken an example here. So, what is the example I have taken? Uh, multiplicand I have taken it as a negative number as minus 6 and multiplier as 3. So, 6 3 is a 18 and minus is there. So, I should get I should write it as minus 18 ok. Then the 6 I will be representing it as 0 1 0 0. Then I am taking here as the 1's complement plus 1. So, this is my 2's complement for minus 6. So, this is for the 2's complement that is 1 0 1 0 is for a minus 6 ok. For suppose this is for m I have assumed it as minus 6. If minus m is there then it will become 6 only no. So, it is 0 double 1 0 ok. Now, we will see we will start with the count as 4 because my uh, the 4 bit I have assumed and initially I have stored in the accumulator as 0 0 0 ok and my multiplier I have taken it as uh, uh, 0 0 1 1 ok. So, q minus 1 it is, it is q minus 1. So, it is initially it is assumed it as a 0 ok. So, now I am comparing it ok, I am comparing it. So, 0 will be compared with since it is minus 6. So, you can see here the last 2 bits, what is the last 2 bit value here? 
1 0. 1 0 means what I should do? Look at compare the last two bits. So, it is 1 0 is here. 1 0 means what I should do? I can go back to the uh, previous. 1 0 means I should do the subtraction operation. So, it is 0 0 0 0 minus m it is there that is plus of minus m ok. So, plus of minus m that is nothing but 6 0 double 1 0. So, I am comparing it now. So, that is what I have written. So, it is I am comparing it 0 0 0 to 0 1 1 0. So, if you do the subtraction operation that is a plus of minus m a plus of minus m ok that one that value is stored in the accumulator itself a plus of minus m will be stored in the accumulator. Now, what is the accumulator is holding the value 0 1 1 0 initially your accumulator was 0 0 0 now your accumulator is holding a value as 0 double 1 0. Now, the multiplier is uh, a multiplicand uh, holds the value as 0 double 1 0 and multiplier as 0 0 1 1. Okay. So, now if you 6 and 3, okay, then you get here as you can go back here. So, we are doing the subtraction operation. Okay. So, it is 6 minus 3, we get answer as 3. So, once you got the answer, we have to do the right shift. We have to do the right shift. Okay. So, you can go back and you can see here. So, 6 and 3, we got the answer as 3. Now, we are doing the right shifting. So, first bit is retained as it is and this 0 is shifted here, this 0 is shifted here, 1 is shifted here and again this one is shifted here and this 0 shifted here, this 0, this 0, this 1. Okay. So, now we got the count will be decremented to 3. After shifting, the count will be decremented to 3. Okay. So, now again you compare. Okay. So, again you compare. ಸರಿಯಲ್ಲ <laughs> Next we will discuss to multiplier using booth encoding technique. So, let me give a small introduction about uh, the booth encoding technique. So, it is used for multiplication of signed binary numbers and the product is represented in two's complement form okay? and then it can handle both positive and negative multipliers uniformly that means you it can take a positive positive negative 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 positive and positive negative numbers and the number of addition operation will greatly reduce when there are consecutive ones or zeros in the multiplier suppose you have two zeros or two ones okay then the number of 
the addition and subtraction operations will be reduced. But the worst case is that if there is any alternate zeros and ones, so 0, 1 or 1, 0, then what happens here is the maximum number of additions and subtractions are required. So, this is the flow chart, ok. So, start then accumulator is A is uh, no, not, you know, notation is A is nothing but an accumulator, then Q minus 1 is initially 0, accumulator is also initially 0, M is nothing but your multiplicand and Q is nothing but your multiplier ok and there is a count we are calling it as a small n. So, we will compare the Q naught and Q minus 1. So, if it is 1 0 it is going to do the subtraction operation and answer will be stored in the accumulator itself. If it is 0 1 we are going to do the addition operation again the answer is stored in the accumulator uh, itself and then we are going to do the shift uh, right operation. So, suppose if it is 1 1 or 0 0 we are not going to do any addition or subtraction operation directly we are going to do the arithmetic right shift ok. Then we are checking the count ok. So, if it is 0 we are going to end the process if it is not 0 go back and once again uh, do the uh, operation ok. So, we will see with an example now. So, I have assumed see I have assumed here m is nothing but a multiplicand and q is nothing but a multiplier ok. So, I have assumed here as m is nothing but multiplier, multiplicand and q is nothing but a multiplier. So, multiplicand I am taking a value as minus 6, multiplier I am taking a value as 3. So, 6 3 is a 18, but since it is a negative that is minus 6 I have assumed. So, I get a product as minus 18 ok. So, now, so this 6 I am taking it as a 2's complement. So, 1's complement plus 1. So, this is the answer for minus 6. So, for m, for minus m, so I am considering it as, I am considering it as a 6 itself. So, 0, 1, 0, 0 only. So, now let us see, we will start the count as 4 now, ok. So, we will start the count as 4. So, initially accumulator is 0, 0, 0, ok. That is, and multiplier will be 0 0 1 1 and my q minus 1 is also initially set to a 0 ok. Now, compare these two. If you compare these two, what it is there here? 1 0 right? 1 0 means with respect to this flow chart, we have to do the subtraction operation. So, this is nothing but a minus 1 it is there actually a plus of minus 1 it is ok. So, a plus of minus 1. So, minus m is nothing but 6. So, the accumulator is doing the that is uh, the a plus of minus m. So, the 6 is stored here in the accumulator. So, 0 1 1 0 is stored in the accumulator and multiplier as it is double 0 double 1 and the q minus 1 is also 0. Now, we are comparing it ok. So, when you compare once again here, what happens? What is the value over here? When you comparing it, whatever the value that is a is 0 0 0 minus of plus of minus m that is 0 1 0 0 that is stored in the accumulator and your multiplier will be a 0 0 1 1. So, we get the answer as 0 0 1 1 only 0 0 1 1. After getting the answer the whole data we are shifting a right ok. So, that is what it is written here. So, once again we are comparing it ok. So, that means the answer is 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 and this 0 we have uh, taken it as as it is. Now, the we are subtracting it. So, once we subtract we get the answer as 
zero zero one one. We got here as zero zero one one. So this answer is stored in the accumulator now. Now what we have to do after that? We have to do the arithmetic right shift. So now we are doing the arithmetic right shift. This first bit is written as it is. We shifted zero to zero, zero to zero, one to one, and this one to here, zero to zero, zero to zero, zero to zero, and this one to here. Okay. Once we have done the shifting operation, now we have to decrement the count. So decrement the count. That means that we are comparing it here. Decrement this count is zero. No. Then once again you have to do the operation. Decrement the count. Again you compare now. So if you compare, what it is there here? Zero, one. It is there. Okay. When you compare here, what it is there here? It is zero, one. It is there. So what is zero, one now? Zero, one means we have to do the addition operation. That means that whatever the value it is there on the the uh, uh, value it is there on the m plus the accumulator value it is added and it should be stored in the accumulator itself. Okay. So if you see here, you are a holding a value as zero 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 one. Okay, and m value will be minus six. Initially we assumed it as minus six. What is the two's complemented value? It is one zero one zero. Okay, so after adding, okay, we get the value as one zero one one. After adding it, we get the value as one zero one one. Okay, now this value is stored in the accumulator. Okay, and then write as it is for the multiplier as one zero zero zero. Okay, now again we have to shift. Write the decrement the count, decrement the count to to two. Okay, so it is not zero. So if it is not zero, then you have to shift the first. You have to shift it. Okay, then you have to decrement the count, shift the operation. So this one you retain as it is. This one will come here. This zero will come here. This one will come here. This will go. Thus shift the operation. Okay, once you have shifted the operation. Again, you have to compare. If you compare it, what it is there? There, it is zero zero. It is there. So zero zero means you can go back and check it up. What is zero zero? No need to do any addition or subtraction operation. Just do the shift operation. Once the shift has been done, decrement the count. Once the shift has been done, decrement the count. Okay. So now, if we compare this. Only the shift operation. We have shifted once again. We have shifted once again this value. Okay, and finally we are decrementing the count. Now our count will be equal to a zero. Okay, so if you decrement the count, the answer will be in two's complement form. The answer will be in. A two's complement form. To get the answer in true form, so you can just take the complement here zero 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 one, and again zero 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 one, uh, one. Then plus one you can add it. So you get uh, here as uh, this is zero one. Okay, so one one is zero with a carry one. Okay, then this is zero one zero zero one. So this is the answer for eighteen. Okay. So since I have assumed here as four bits, so four counts I have taken it. Okay. So after the shift operation, I am decrementing the count. So if it is zero, fine. If it is not zero, then we are going back and we are doing the same operation once again. Okay. So if you get a consecutive zeros and ones. Then the we are just do the arithmetic shift right operation. Okay, the number of additions and subtractions will be reduced. Okay, so if you are getting alternate zeros and ones, then you have to check whether we have to do the addition or a subtraction operation. 
So, there is another uh, data path elements. So, these are the different symbols uh, that are used as uh, data path elements. So, the figure A shows uh, the uh, negative edge triggered uh, uh, the D flip flop having a preset option. So, this will be used to uh, store the values and uh, figure B uh, it is an uh, n bit wide uh, to input uh, the NAND array that is you can see the buses over here and figure C uh, uh, the A and B are considered it as bus over here whereas here the B is considered as a bus and A is taken it as a control input and this can be used for your clock gating okay, and power gating etc. And you can see the multiplexer so having a bus signal so it can be used uh, for a conditional sum adder we have already just discussed no and there is a incrementer and decrementer so that can be uh, for example if there is a serial adder so if there is a serial adder you can increment and you can uh, decrement it so this symbol can be used and if there is a zeros detector and ones detector so zeros detector uh, in a network if they, you have a, a stream of zeros so all the zeros you can merge it and you can send one zero to the uh, path okay so similarly a uh, one detector if there is a stream of ones are there so all ones you can combine it and you can send only one one to that so z uh, one detector and this uh, you can use it for as an uh, the what is that term? the uh, an arithmetic uh, uh, adder or a subtractor so you can see here uh, because you can plus or minus it is there it can be used as adder or a, a subtractor. So, the next comes is IO cells ok. So, the IO parts are uh, specialized to connect to the actual pins of the device ok. So, the bidirectional parts this figure shows a three state bidirectional output buffer ok. So, bidirectional parts often include the uh, protection diodes to guard against the electrostatic discharge and over voltage conditions and then higher drive capability to drive a large uh, capacitances ok that is bonding pad, bond wire, device pin ok. So, PCB uh, trace if it is greater than uh, 20 picofarad and this uh, there are different types of uh, IVO pads are available and are provided to perform the different functions like digital input, digital output, digital bidirectional and analog input or output ok. So, this is an example of a three state bidirectional uh, the IVO pad ok. So, this is a control signal what is the control signal O E is a control signal how exactly it is going to work as an input pad or an output pad ok. So, if you give a signal here as 1 for example O E is equal to 1 O E is equal to 1. Okay. Due to the uh, presence of this inverter I2 we get the output here as 0 and you give a data out a signal is also as a 0, you can give data out as 1 or 0. So, according to the NOR gate function table right, okay. according to the NOR gate function table when both are 0 the output of the NOR gate will be 1. Okay. So, the data out it is also going here this is a uh, NAND gate. Okay. So, the NAND gate output will be according to the NAND gate uh, function table it is 0, 1 means it is the output also 1 that has been given individually to M1 and M2 transistors. So, since this is a PMOS transistor this transistor will be turned off whereas, this has an NMOS transistor ok. So, that M2 transistor will be turned on and pull the output to uh, 0. So, this uh, drives the uh, output pad because initially data out has given 0. So, this can work as a output pad ok. So, suppose if your OE signal goes to 0, if your OE signal goes to 0, so due to the presence of this inverter we get here as 1. So, this can be uh, uh, 0 or 1 ok. So, according to the uh, the NOR gate uh, function table, so you get uh, here as uh, the uh, 0 only ok. Similarly, here your OE is 0, 0, 0 ok. 
your O is 0, 0, 0, so the output of your NAND gate is 1. So, what happens here? Both the transistors will be off, both the transistors will be off, ok. So, I have told in the previous class when both the transistors are turned off, then it results to an high impedance state or a, a Z state. So, you get here as Z state, ok. Now, this will work as a input pad. How it will work as a input pad? See here, this is my IO pad, this is my IO pad, there is a current limiting resistor as R3, ok, and I am using a diode, two diodes, this is connected to uh, VDD and similarly, this diode is connected to VSS. So, this D1 and D2, the job of this D1 and D2, it is going to clip the voltages above VDD and below VSS. So, this is not an inverter, this is a buffer, ok. So, that has been given to the buffer that is nothing but the data in, that is nothing but your data in, that is that data in is going to the core logic or the CMOS logic. So, R3 serves as a current limiting resistor and these two diodes is going to clip off the above VDD voltage and below VSS voltage and that has been given to the buffer and the buffer output will be the data in that is going to the core logic. So, instead of buffer we can go for a Smith trigger also because there may be some uh, noisy signals will be there and this noisy signal we can give it to the Smith trigger. The Smith trigger output is going to give a pure a square wave. So, this is how we can use as IO input pad, this is how we can use as an input pad whenever your OE signal goes to a low state. So, if your OE signal goes to high state, it can be used as an output pad. If your OE signal goes to low state, then it can be used as an input pad, ok. So, the last concept is uh, the uh, cell co compilers, ok. So, the process of handcrafting circuits and layout for a full custom IC is tedious ok, time consuming that we know and error prone task. So, there are two types of automated layout assembly tools and we are often we are calling it as a silicon compilers. The first is a RAM compiler or a multiplier compiler, the second is the programming language. So, programming language is going to uh, assemble the layout that is what the physical design, we are going to write the code. So, from the input command file, we are writing the code, we are writing the constraints files, ok. Finally, we are going to uh, generate the, uh, the, it is going to generate the layout and that layout we are going to check with the, whether there is a, uh, the timing violations are there, ok. So, then if the timing violations are not there, then that file is nothing but your GDS2, that is a steaming file, it has been, it will be going to the foundry, ok. That GDS2 file, it will be sent to the uh, foundry, ok. The next is the DRAM and ASIC RAM or SRAM. So, the RAM compilers are available to produce a single port RAM. Single port RAM, you can do only one read and one write operation and dual port and multi port RAMs, you can uh, multi port RAMs, we can go for uh, the two reads, two writes, ok. So, also, you can go for one read, two write, ok, those operation can be done. So, model compiler, it is going to verify the circuit at the uh, behavioral level, then netlist compiler, simulate the circuit and verify that it works correctly at the structural level, ok. Then the last is silicon compilers are thus the complex pieces of software and uh, it as the silicon compiler will assume will produce the working silicon even if the configuration has not tested, ok. So, this is about uh, the introduction to the cell compilers. Oh, thank you.